Trends in IoT, the Internet of Things. My guest is Jennifer Halstead. She is Chief Financial Officer with Link Labs. Hello, Jennifer. Hi. So for those of us who have been in a cave for the last uh, five, 10 years, sure. explain to us what is the Internet of Things IoT? Sure, so IoT being the Internet of Things, it's how everything connects. Mm -hmm. So if you think about from a consumer level, your water bottle you know, measures the level of water and it sends it to your phone and it maybe tells you, all right, you need to drink more or here's how much you've had today and you've met your goals and that you know, works into your personal physical goals. Um, from from a business perspective, it's how all your business things connect. So mm. it can be from your assets to your people to your data to you know anything you're trying to connect that you can get um, that information into uh, one place. So on the consumer side, when we first started hearing about the Internet of Things, one of the big deals was we're going to have smart refrigerators right. someday, stuff like that, just as you say. Exactly. Smart water bottles, I don't know about that. Yeah, they're Whether out there. I, I know they're out there. I'm not doubting it. I'm not sure I, I want my bottle telling me when to drink. <laughs> right. But the point is, on the business side, that's really compelling and interesting right. as it relates to the supply chain. Exactly. What types of devices might benefit, What that might be linked into the Internet of Things that would help uh, an organization, a business organization? Yes. Yeah, so for businesses, they're doing a lot of things like smart cities, smart buildings, energy savings. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing asset tracking. Um, we're seeing just a lot of connected from inventory to packages to delivery um, and you know the whole infrastructure of a building or a city, it's all being connected now. How about the supply chain? How can the IoT specifically enable better supply chain management? Sure. Now you can get end-to-end -end visibility in your supply chain. Mm -hmm. So all the way from the manufacturers through logistics and shipping, you know, to your 3PLs, all the way to the end customer, you can get complete visibility into not only the timing, um, use that for planning. Um, for knowing how much supply chain you know you need to get, what the lead times are, um, but then the final delivery to the customer when that happens, um, and we've seen you know IoT then linking that to payments and you know just immediate digital transformation across the entire supply chain. Mm -hmm. And yet, it seems like what this will do is it will present businesses with an absolute flood of data. How do they manage it? How do they even handle that volume of stuff? How do they know what to do with it? What's, what, what information is relevant? It just seems like that alone yep. will be a huge challenge. Yeah, it's been really interesting. I think as companies have addressed IoT, a large portion of IoT projects have gotten completely stalled. And I think that part of it is implementation, but part of it is just they don't know what to do with that data mm -hmm. and information. So, you know, over the last year, we've seen enhancements in how companies can take that analytic, um, take that data. They can use machine learning, data analytics to get what's valuable to them out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then use that information to improve their processes and how they deliver to their customers. It feels like the Internet of Things would have gone nowhere without the, without the parallel rise of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Right. Would that be fair to say? I think it definitely was stalled without some of those things. Yeah. Um, you know, we saw a lot of IoT projects get started, um, but now we're seeing that transformation at a strategic level, where companies are not just using it to address one specific pain point, mm -hmm. they're using IoT to impact their whole strategy and how they work across the company by being able to utilize that data better mm -hmm. because they have robotics and animation and machine learning and artificial intelligence behind that. Yeah. One of the big concerns today, especially at a time of ransomware and other types of cyber threats, is the question of security yeah. of the IoT. Are these devices secure? Can they be penetrated? Are they a doorway into large into organizations? It seems like a pretty scary prospect. It is. Tell me what you think about security and, and IoT today. Yeah, it's 
you know, not where it needs to be in general. I think there's a lot of uh, vulnerabilities in most IoT devices. And so a company's got to be careful and evaluate the security behind it. You know, what maybe works for a consumer that might not be as secure isn't intended to be used by a business where security is a big a concern and a big risk for the company. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be you know, very evaluated when you do an IoT project of what that security looks like to make sure it's not going to be um, a vulnerability for the company. There's talk a lot about it in the, in the early days of IoT with consumer devices that you buy something like that and there's a factory password mm -hmm. and you don't bother to change it. Right. The human aspect of controlling IoT, we've talked about how this is an amount of data that can't possibly be handled by humans alone, and yet humans themselves must be there in order to ensure security of the IoT. So what do you recommend to people engaging with the IoT as to how they can just make sure that they are handling it properly and securely. Right. Know what you're dealing with. You know, as mm. a consumer, when I'm putting in that smart vacuum or maybe the lighting system in my house, I'm not necessarily aware of the security vulnerabilities that might be there. Mm -hmm. But in a business setting, you know, have the right IT people working with a company that you're dealing with to make sure that those security things are there. Companies are very aware of this. Um, IoT commercial enterprise companies who are providing these services are making sure that the capabilities are there, mm -hmm. but then they've got to work with the customer, like you said, to make sure the passwords are being changed and you know that there's not universal things out there um, that people just don't know about. And so it's not being secured because they're not following the right protocols. Would you say the technology is yet is more maturing to do? That is, I mean, what, 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 what does it have to do to develop to its to full potential? You know, we've seen a lot of growth since COVID. Um, yeah. There was not a lot of selling going on in that year. Um, mm -hmm. People just weren't buying. And so I think companies in general hunkered down. We saw a lot of development in um, IoT particularly and enhancement in product. Um, and so a lot of new things have come out to market in the next, in the last year. And I think we're going to see that continue to expand over time. The digital transformation in the last year in every area of life was mm -hmm. huge. And we're going to see that continue to expand in IoT and uh, artificial intelligence as well. Jennifer Halstead, thank you so much. Thanks. Explaining to us where the, where the Internet of Things is going today and the value that it brings to organizations is as well as addressing some of the concerns surrounding it. Thanks very much for being with me today. I really My appreciate pleasure. it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. We've been talking IoT with Jennifer Halstead of Link Labs. Thank you very much for watching.